There's been a lot of argument within the press saying that if Britain were to leave the EU, we could go join a free trade agreement with the US unilaterally. We could get into trade agreements with China and India, even if Britain were to pursue that. It's very unlikely it would get the kind of deal that the EU would be able to get on behalf of the UK, because the EU is six times larger than the UK. I'm talking about Brexit and how that might affect the UK economy in migration, investment and future trade policy of the UK. In terms of migration, people worry immigrants might come from the EU and take away jobs from workers and might in fact lead to reduction in wages for workers born in the UK. And what we show is that in fact if you look at very detailed data, even during the crisis years, you see almost no correlation at all between the number of immigrants that come into a UK county and the unemployment or the real wages of workers born in that county. If we didn't see big negative effects then, when demand was low, it's very unlikely that going into the future, when the economy is recovering, we're going to see big negative effects here. The second area is investment. Part of the single market is the fact that EU firms can go anywhere in any member country of the EU and raise money. They can invest anywhere and they also tend to invest a lot in the UK. UK is one of the most attractive destinations in the world for foreign direct investment. And going forward, if Britain were to exit the EU, we expect that foreign direct investment coming into the UK is going to fall by a fifth. For every five pounds that came into the country previously, you're losing one pound just by exiting the EU. Even if you were to join the European Free Trade Agreement, that number is not going to recover. And what we think that would translate into is a drop in household incomes of about £400 per household per year. There's work looking at the car industry. What you find is that because of the increase in trade costs that might happen after Brexit, what would happen would be a 12% reduction in sales of cars across the UK. And that would also translate into, of course, higher prices for consumers that are buying cars. So 12% reduction for regions that produce cars could be a very substantial shock to the economy. There's been a lot of argument within the press saying that if Britain were to leave the EU, we could go join a free trade agreement with the US unilaterally. We could get into trade agreements with China and India, even if Britain were to pursue that. It's very unlikely it would get the kind of deal that the EU would be able to get on behalf of the UK, because the EU is six times larger than the UK. When we've looked at the kinds of free trade agreements that the EU has negotiated on behalf of the UK, those free trade agreements have reduced prices much more in the UK for consumers rather than in the European Union, which suggests that in fact the kinds of policies that the EU is pursuing on behalf of the UK are in line with UK's interests. The takeaway is that there's a trade-off between what you give up in terms of national sovereignty and what you gain in terms of market access. And therefore, going into the future, because there are going to be policies there which EU is going to be negotiating, which are going to have a big impact in the UK, that the UK should have a voice in those negotiations and it can do that only by being part of the European Union.